Welcome to the Lunch Hour with Mr. Credit. Oh, well, he's very popular. And today it's Macro Monday. Sounds like somebody's got a case of the Mondays. Where we show you the big picture and how you can take advantage of it. Show me the money! And now, the Lunch Hour with Mr. Credit on ESPN Radio 1700. It is that time. Welcome. It's your lunch hour, Mr. Credit. It is JJ in the hot seat, Synergy One Lending today with an awesome guest. Um, definitely not a first time offender, and you probably have heard him on the Mr. Credit Show in the past. David Rudd, Kindred Real Estate Services. Happy Monday to you, David. Happy Monday to you as well. Thanks for having me. I'm glad to have you in here because we're going to cover a lot of ground, and it's going to be a little bit different today. I know. A lot of our real estate guests that we have in the studio, um, you know, all we talk about is real estate. We're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna cross that bridge when the time comes. But we're gonna talk about something different that has affected you personally, and it's a, it's a great topic and one that we're definitely gonna make people smarter today on. So I'm excited about that. Um, and if you want to look up David, um, I'm gonna throw this out here right now before we even get into anything. Kindred. Real estate, well, it's kindredre.com, like kindredre.com. You check out David and his background. And the cool thing about David, he's got a, a, a vast background, which we will go over um, when we get into it here. Um, let's do a quick market update. The market was red early on, it's turned to green, and um, not much green, but it has turned to green. And, and it's overcome even some poor housing. Um, sales release information today, which is not that big of a deal. Um, you know, it's nationwide type stuff. We're here in sunny San Diego, and I'll tell you what. I mean, past this past weekend, it felt a little different. I don't know. <laughs> in North County, we had a little thunder, a little rain, yes. a little lightning, and I was just back east just a few weeks ago, and that's the kind of thing you see you know, in different parts of the country. So it was cool. You know, it's a little bit different. Yeah, a little bit different, especially since we've been in the drought. It was nice to have some precipitation to Definitely. help get over it. Not enough, unfortunately, but... Yeah, I with know... the heat, it probably burned off fast. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, people were referring to it feeling a little bit like Florida. Yeah. Uh, where we were at, because we had so much humidity in the air. Yeah, it so. was humid. It was sticky. It was a sticky weekend, and it's hot today. And, and I'll tell you, David, I mean, I'm sorry I'm underdressed today. Normally, I'm in coat and tie. <laughs> and I woke up today and I said, you know what? I'm, I'm not wearing the coat today. It's, it's hot out there. Yeah. And well, in San Diego, we've got, you know, realtors that will roll around in uh, flip flops, shorts. And I, I always have to give a little bit of a chuckle. You're dressed nice. Uh, but, uh, you know, if you don't know who the realtor is yes. compared to the client, it can be a little bit tricky. But yes, you're looking sharp. Well, thank you. I pre- and you are as well. Um, you know, so one of the one of the reasons why the market turned green today, and I, I have to jump into this, and we are going to talk a little real estate today, and we are. I mean, if you are looking for a luxury property, I'm going to throw this out there right now too, and 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 I'm not going to give up the information on this, but we're going to talk about a home later in the show that is probably one of the most amazing homes I've seen on print at least. This thing is insanely nice. It's coming to the market. And you can have a chance to preview this thing. And if you've if you're in the luxury market or if you ever wanted to tour a luxury estate, um, we're going to give you the information to give you the chance to do this. And it's one of David's listings. It's coming on market. And if you're looking for that home, that special dream home, this could be the home that you've been looking for. But David, I got to talk about this because this was just announced. It, it was broached in the news last week, and I think I don't know if it was Friday, maybe it's Thursday. It was talked about. But last week, the the Zillow Trulia talks of Zillow buying Trulia came to fruition. Dun, and, dun, dun. Yeah, it's a big <laughs> deal. And I at, last week when I heard about it, I, and I I totally blew it off. I said oh, that's that's a ridiculous thing. I don't know why they would even you know buy them. And it's done. It's a done deal. It's announced today. It's a done deal. And I'm sure there's paperwork that's got to be signed and inked and things, especially when you're talking about. $3.5 billion. And I was going to push a button on my soundboard here, David, and my notes to what 
buttons go with which sound are now gone. <laughs> so I have no kerching, idea. Kerching, yeah, yeah. Kerching. Who knows what I'm going to push now? <laughs> um, so yeah, I can't do that. But um, somebody's getting a big fat check with a three and a half billion dollar buyout. So David, let's. I just when I see this stuff, number one. With the stock market going crazy as it has, and we just keep hitting new higher levels, it seems like every week, every month, every quarter, when I see these types of deals kind of go down, it's, it's astonishing to me because we're talking about billions of dollars. Nothing's in the millions anymore. Definitely. And you have a background as a wealth advisor. When you see something like this, what, I mean, what's the first thing that kind of pops in your head? Buying the biggest and best database that you have out there on the market, as well as trying to control and increase their revenues by skimming that off their advertising dollars that they're taking from real estate agents today. Okay. So you think this is a good buy? No. No. I think that, well, from a financial perspective, yes, because they now have a database. They're able to segment the market much better, as well as those are going to be long-term clients and looking at averages or statistical um, time frames that people stay within their homes, we're now going to have a correlation to uh, being able to recap revenue, not only just from that uh, client or potential client, but also from a uh, marketing perspective to realtors and selling databases, selling marketing lists, and uh, the potential and a speculation perspective. And again, this is speculation and opinion. But it also would allow one of the largest advertising companies to become Zillow, a real estate company, and actually have their own agents nationwide. And you think that's a possibility? Possibility in the future. Yeah. yeah. I, I wouldn't rule it out. That's yeah. for certain. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's, more, there's more there. When we're in a billion perspective, they obviously have an investment, a vision. Um, the original founders that went up into Zillow, very, very, very smart people. Uh, and were around and developed quite a few things during uh, the first tech bubble. And so I continue to speculate on how quickly uh, this is going to change the face yeah, of real it's estate. It's really interesting. And, I, you know, it's, it's one of those things that, you know, kind of being on the ground level in, in the lending side, you always wonder, you know, how technology is going to change the space of everything. And obviously it has. And, and we've seen that in real estate. I mean, I don't know what the percentage are of people starting their their real estate search online, but we know it's extremely high. Very, very high. Almost probably everybody kind of starts there. And a couple of the places where they start are, you know, now these two companies have merged, Zillow, Trulia. Um, you know, my, my biggest thing, and I think it's been a contention of a lot of people, is just, you know, the information, the data that you actually get from Zillow. Because uh, they're different, right? I Very mean, different. Trulia and, and Zillow are different. A lot of people go to Zillow to find kind of value, what their home is worth. And, and I think in a lot of places, it's just not that data is not always up to par. For, for sure. Yeah. I, I, I recommend for anybody that's using Zillow, go into their disclosures. In some markets, they're off up to 30%. Mm -hmm. And when dealing with a client and, you know, love the entire idea for research, I think knowledge is power. But when you go in, it tends to everybody loves it when the, a home is overvalued. So you have a four hundred thousand dollar home that Zillow is stating is a million dollars. But soon after, if their four hundred thousand dollar home is valued at three hundred thousand, there's panic. Now, all of a sudden, Zillow means nothing. Right. So definitely, if you don't know about that, because in some markets they are off by 30 percent, do look at the margin of error because that is is the consumer needs to take that into account. And it's, yeah, it's not something that's going to be in red letters across the top of the screen, <laughs> of obviously. Of course not. Yeah, it just isn't. And it depends how they're getting their information. I mean, I have a buddy um, who's selling a house in Montana right now. His house is going to be listed for about 465 Pull it up on Zillow, you're at about 315 And that's just because of the way the data gets recorded in Montana. Um, you know, it can't pool like it can... Here in Southern California. Correct. Yeah. And, and in some states and counties or cities, they do not require the dollar amount to be recorded within the public record. So in those areas, they can't really provide any valid data unless they're pulling it from the source, which is being given to them through the MLS 
through the actual listing agent and realtor. So that's where they're, again, getting their data and they're edging into a market which is going to get very dangerous for the National Association of Realtors and I think realtors across the, the America as well as the world. So I have here's the big question that I have for you. So it, it seems like the MLS really controls the real estate space from a realtor perspective. No longer. No longer. Um, and, and, you know, I talked about that a little bit last week at the, on the debate. And MLS is not the end-all, be-all. It is not necessarily uh, – it's become a, a portion of the tool. But if you look within most MLSs, uh, not only in you know San Diego but across the United States, there's a button you push that syndicates that property across 25, 30, 40 different – um, websites out there. So they understand that they're slightly antiquated. Um, and so they're trying to get an edge in, edge in the space. The problem is, is that we're feeding data to companies that are making money off right. the listings and we're not able to capture that, that income back as realtors when we're the ones that are negotiating the contracts, making the best interest of our clients. I mean, typically if you go in and look statistics uh, nationwide by using a realtor, you're, it's typically your home's going to sell 10% more than trying to for sale by owner. Yeah, and that's that's a crucial kind of statistic that you need to realize because, you know, I still see people out there and I talk to people that are doing the for sale by owner. And what they don't understand is, you know, they, they're, they're so worried about paying the commissions, right? Yes. Well, so listen to what David just said. On statistical average, you're going to gain 10% more. You pay out your 6%, even at a full commission split, and you're still netting 4% more than doing the transaction yourself. Definitely. And that's, that's what the consumer needs to kind of understand. Let the professionals do their job. Exactly. Right? Yeah. I mean, don't go to court without a, a lawyer. If you right. want to self-represent, you're potentially going to be hitting yourself or shooting yourself in the foot. Yeah. And by using representation, you're able to mitigate any of the emotional issues that you could potentially have. Because, uh, you know, I, I have clients that will drive back by the house um, that they sold and all of a sudden their, you know, heart is hitting them because they changed the house. That was my house. And really, you know, my first, you know, conversation with my client or potential client is, first of all, this is no longer going to be your house anymore. So we need to get over that issue. Uh, once we get over that issue, we're going to get top dollar for you. It's, yeah, yeah, you become emotionally tied to that property. It's, <laughs> exactly. it's, a, it's, a, it's a business decision at a certain point in time. Now, do you think, I mean, Looking at this deal that Zillow and Trulia made, I mean, obviously a huge deal in the real estate space. Do realtors need Zillow and Trulia? Do they need this conglomeration? Or, I mean, let's just say, and, and I think my, my question, I mean, to me it seems like the realtor base and, and all the syndicate, the way it's syndicated out there, that could be shut down with a switch. You don't check the button. You don't syndicate the property to all these sort, sort of means. Do the two sides need each other? Or can they run separately? They need each other. And the reason being is that that data, those photos, all of that information becomes their property. And if you read through that as a realtor, if you read through that as a nationwide agency, whether you're KW or Keller Williams, uh, which is you know great, we actually just became affiliated with them and took uh, Kindred Real Estate brokerage over there, or we're dealing uh, with other, you know, Berkshire, uh, we're dealing with Sotheby's. Uh, what happens is our, you know, information again is power, but don't give up and put all your cards into ownership into a company that their pure, pure model is profit. And that profit is being made off of data that we're providing to them freely. Uh, as a licensed real estate appraiser, there was an extraordinarily big issue that went on that I was very frustrated with, and this is prior to the downturn, but we were running through something called an autom automated value model. Mm -hmm. And guess where they were getting that information from? Data that was provided by other appraisers, yeah. and they were skimming that margin and making money off of appraisers that had been providing them data. That's and that was not to be used by them unless it was, but that was given to them by the, the banks or the procuring cause. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just, you know, it's, <laughs> you, we, have to, we have to be careful. You know, I, think the, I think the main thing is you have to be careful always where, where you're getting the data for, from, data from. You know, if you're looking at Zillow, if, I mean, that's a starting point, but you need the professional to help you around that. We have David Rudd in the studio today, Kindred Real Estate 
services. When we come back, we're going to talk about something that um, David's had happen to him. And, and, and the, the main topic here is identity theft and what it means, the cause, the remedies. We're going to get into identity takeover, what the differences are. It's your lunch hour. We're here to make you smarter than everybody else today on your Macro Monday. We'll be right back. If you would like free advice from Mr. Credit, just call or text 619-786-7853. That's 619-786-7853. Welcome back to the Lunch Hour with Mr. Credit. And today it's Macro Monday on ESPN Radio 1700. Welcome back. It is your lunch hour on this Macro Monday. It's JJ Synergy One Lending. If you have a question, you want to be read on air, you want to get in touch with our guest today, it's very easy to do. Just go to askjjnow.com. You can shoot me a text message, send me an email, or give me a call. We'll try to take care of all your questions. May not be today on air, but we will get them answered for you, put you in touch with David. Rudd with Kindred Real Estate Services in the studio today. And just remember, we bring in the guests that we do because they're experts in the field and what we're talking about. I mean, that's that we're here to help. We're here to help you match the right person um, to, to get your questions answered and to make sure that you're being taken care of. And, um, you know, today is an interesting topic we're going to be talking about. And it's not one that I can even remember us ever talking about. I've been on this show for... Uh, three and a half plus years. And um, I don't think we've ever talked about it. At least I haven't been in studio when we've talked about it. And I think it's a, it's a, it's a great thing. And for me, it's interesting because there's so much email stuff that's going on right now. And, um, you know, one of the things I've noticed recently is you get the email and it's, it's, you know, saying, Hey, you know, Jonathan, you got an email. There's a Google doc waiting for you. Um, you know, and they're very targeted, very specific, um, and it and it and it's from someone you know, and it doesn't unless you really know the IT side of stuff, which I don't. It looks like it's really coming from the person because a lot of spam email you can just kind of hover yes. and see that it's not from that person's email address. But these newer ones are getting very technical. And recently, I had an email that came through, and it was very much that you know, here's a Google Doc. Um, you're looking to update your information. Somebody I know, I re- I actually replied to the email and said, "Hey, you know, I this is was this legitimate. Is this legit?" Got a response instantly. Yep, I sent it. Wow. Open the Google Doc, and sure enough, it was not. You know, and then ten minutes later, I got an email from the real person saying, "Don't open any emails. No, I was hacked." Negative. And I'm like, "Oh, great! I'm on my <laughs> Google Doc right now. I just put in my password for all my Google stuff." Great. And, you know, I spent the next four hours, um, you know, doing the malware bytes and changing passwords and things like that. But it's very stressful. So we're ta- talking about identity theft here. And, and David, this is um, this is something that has happened to you recently. Mm-hmm. Um, let's let's talk about it. I mean, what what's going on with your situation and what you know, what have you learned? I, this is awesome that it's happened. I yeah. mean, not, not, not awesome in the sense you, that it's, yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Cause it's a, a, it's a stressful situation, yeah. but I, I think through the process, there's no unified situation. And so the, you know, you, your first conversation is when you, you talk with somebody and I say, Oh, identity theft. Um, the first response, a lot of time, Oh, that happened to me too. And it's a misconception when your credit card is used by somebody else or there, you know, there's a theft that goes on by doing a double swipe. That's actually they're just doing fraud. So they actually aren't doing a theft of your identity. They're taking over on your credit card. And obviously with the provisions and the insurance that the credit card companies are providing you, those charges are going to most likely be reversed out. And there is no really additional information that uh, the person committing the fraud has on you. Okay. So it's like, you know, hey, my card, and this has happened to me. Card, you know, pizza was purchased in another state with a credit card that I hadn't used in years. Yes. Like you, you see it, you call, you get reimbursed, they give you a new credit card, that one's shut down and you're done. Exactly. Yep. And that and that is just a, a portion of fraud, somebody operating as, you know, using your card. Where we get into an identity theft situation and going through this, it's, it's much more scary 
situation. And the initial, the way that it initially happened was I received a telephone call from T-Mobile and T-Mobile had contacted and said, um, thank you for opening up your new account. And the first thing I did was there was no T-Mobile account I just opened. So call in, get into the fraud department. And at that point they had not only because they had gone in against my credit report. So they had my social security number. They had my date of birth. They did not have, they were using it in an address that was from a very long time ago, which the interesting part is that address, because I've had multiple addresses, was little known to other people. Interesting. So you find in and your mind starts reeling, like how did this information get out there? Was it from uh, something that was on an application from a medical office? And your mind just goes reeling. You're spinning like, where did the information come from? And you're not so focused at that first time. It's been shut down. Um, and so, uh, you know, my ignorance over the subject was a little bit more because uh, what it, it continued on. They started getting credit cards in my name, uh, which wasn't necessarily apparent until I went in to go look at my credit report, okay. which then leads you down, you know, that you follow the white rabbit and it starts getting more scary and scary and scary. So interestingly enough, uh, as this continued to go on, I do what's called a 90 day lockdown, uh, which is a fraud alert that's put through all three credit bureaus. Uh, TransUnion uh, was great. Um, uh, Experian. Experian, uh, and this was my personal experience. I'm not saying anything that would, you know, just it was has been a very difficult situation okay. with Experian. Okay. It's not over. Okay. Um, so that that portion was has been frustrating. So okay. immediately at, they were at the 90 day lock. Uh, we were continuing to be victims they were continuing to pull credit go so, out so and get let's, services let's go back and let's say so so the 90 that you're calling trans you have three credit bureaus transunion <laughs> exactly. equifax, equifax experian exactly. and saying hey my identity has been compromised i need to lock down my credit exactly and so they help they don't help whatever but you, uh, assuming you're assuming your credit nobody can open an account for 90 days okay okay so as this continues to go on, they also have an option, which is a seven year lockdown. OK, so ultimately had to put down the seven year lockdown. However, there was one of the uh, credit reporting agencies that was continuing to release information, which created additional problems for me. So at this point, again, they have my social security number. They have my date of birth. They know a couple more p bits of information and there are when you contact the companies they cannot provide you the address these credit cards are being sent to wow. their purchases are being sent to uh, they need to come in by subpoena oh wow that's crazy so exactly. you're the person that's been <laughs> stolen from but you can't get the information exactly unbelievable Which it is because you're sitting here the victim well obviously you added them to my account that account is my account information so you need to provide the information to me um, well, true enough, the credit reporting agency that I had the difficulty with ends up sending me a letter stating we can't do a seven year lockdown on you without providing additional information. And that information was they wanted a copy of my passport, a cop copy of my driver's license and a copy of my social security card. OK, so my first instinct on it was ha 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 ha, because anybody can Photoshop that. Sure. So. Great. Good luck. They have my information. So how secure is that? Yep. So at that point, obviously, the frustration goes on. But the immediate thing that you need to do when this happens is contact the police. You need to make them informed, which I didn't know right away. Okay. So you, need you to... wouldn't think about that because it's not a it's not an item. You didn't steal my car. Ex yeah. Exactly. And so you it's you can file a police report about your, you know, identity because people are taking out credit and having these. Uh, purchases or equipment sent to an address that you don't know. So contact the police. Uh, definitely it's a very uh, difficult process because the police and they have other items that they're focusing on. The uh, detectives, unless you're the squeaky wheel, you're not going to get additional information. I had details that they were calling out of a specific city, which is in Duarte, uh, which is in L.A. County. And, you know, the files transferred from San Diego up there. There's a lot of communication that has to go back and forth. And 
uh, is it necessarily anybody was doing something wrong from a, a service perspective? It's no, the system's just broken. Well, it, they just don't have that line, right? Exactly. You know? yeah. And dealing with the credit card company, ultimately the credit card company gave out my new address. So that complicated things more. So the credit wow. card company ended up, even though they knew fraud was going on, they pr they provided my new home address. So that complicated things more because then they knew where I lived. So it, it, at this point, it's identity theft. And then it quickly switched over to what's called identity takeover. Okay, let's, let's stop there. When we come back, that's where I want to get into because this is huge. I mean, this is a big deal because uh, maybe it's happened to you and you don't know what to do. Or maybe it's happening to you right now and you don't know what to do. Um, that's why we're here. We're here to make you smarter than everybody else. When we come back, we're going to get into what is identity takeover. It's happened to David. That's David Rudd, Kindred Real Estate Services in the studio today, giving us a lesson on what has happened, what you do to hopefully remedy the situation. There's more to it when we come back. It's your lunch hour, 1700 ESPN. If you would like free advice from Mr. Credit, just call or text 619-786-7853. That's 619-786-7853. Welcome back to the Lunch Hour with Mr. Credit. And today it's Macro Monday on ESPN Radio 1700. Welcome back. JJ Synergy One lending in the hot seat today. We have an incredible guest in the studio today sharing a personal experience, which is amazing. David Rudd, Kindred Real Estate Services with Kin. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna say it differently. It's kindred.re.com. Go there and check out David and his services. A little bit later in the studio, he has a listing that um, I was just looking at the brochure in the break. That's insane. Um, definitely a dream home for many of us. And um, I don't even know what I would do with this thing. But um, if you're looking for that dream home, stay tuned because we're gonna get into that thing. Before the break, we were talking about identity theft, um, fraud, and two different things there, and kind of what's happened with David. And, and we were just about to get into identity takeover. So David, I'm gonna, so you kind of went through the process, you found out that somebody has stolen your identity, you've locked down your credit, some stuff is still kind of happening out there, you gotta file the police report, and then you find out that somebody has taken over your identity. So what what is that? When you get into a takeover, and I was just at the initial portion of it, but at that point, they're able to start securing credit that you already have in place. So they they start changing personal information, such as email addresses. They start changing what the physical address is, and they're getting credit, actually. Your, the, they start getting themselves added to your accounts. So your, your credit card you have in your wallet right now that you use on an everyday basis, the one that you're still using, yes. they are taking that over. Yes, now they wow. become authorized users on the account. So now they're a legitimate part of your file. And that's where it starts getting a little bit you know, obviously more disturbing. And fortunately, at this point in time, things appear to be have settled down. But this, is, from what I've read and gone through this far, this information continues to be sold, resold, resold, resold. So what they have informed me is this, this is something that you're going to be dealing with for the rest of your life. Oh, because geez. once the information is out there, it's out there. But Knowing that, you know, again, it's knowledge is power and knowing that and having the precautionary steps in place, uh, I think that it it's something that you can protect yourself from. And it's not necessarily going to make you sleep better at night, uh, but it's one of those things, hey, I just need to keep an eye on it and not leave it up to these three credit bureaus that are profiting off, again, data for me. And it's and, definitely a data, a data show. Exactly. <laughs> we're, we're it's data. like yeah. have a local office I can go into. Don't ask me for photocopies. Let me come in. You're making so much money. Have a local office that you're required to do regulatory wise that I'm coming into. You're physically looking at my information so that you can verify it is me and you can actually start working for me. Yeah. Uh, one of the interesting things about this during the takeover is uh, one of the companies actually had slipped and said where this um it, where this information uh or these packages were being sent to so i was able to give the police that 
That's uh, huge. Which I was able to look up being in the real estate industry. It's a very small cul de sac. So I provided them the information and I said, this is happening in Duarte and it's happening on Ivory Circle. So nothing very much can happen. They're, they need more data. They need more information. Well, so, so they won't just go check it out. <laughs> yeah, no, which is, you know, understandable. They need cause. Otherwise, it's like going in and knocking on every door. Hello, so. my identity has been taken over. It's right there. Yes. It's right there. The, go go knock on five doors. Exactly. Yeah. And, you know, at one point you get into a frustration and, you know, I was on the phone with them and I'm like, well, should I drive to the cul-de-sac and say, please, please come help me. There's a robbery in progress because they're <laughs> they're robbing my identity. Yeah. So uh, coincidentally enough, this last week week, there was another person that had identity theft. They were able to go into the home. They were able to confiscate a lot of materials, but my information was no longer in there. So really? it had already been pulled. Wow. So, and that is a part of the re, you know resale business of what goes on. These people are professional. I had to contact the FCC because I was getting calls that had legitimate caller IDs with the fraud departments of companies I had credit with, you would also, and those, they were ghost numbers if you attempted to call them back. So they are a very, very professional operation. You're getting, you know, phone calls from an Indian call center. You're getting from the Malaysian call centers. And so it sounds like legitimate because we're dealing with them in these yes. companies and business all, all the time. Yep. So on one side where I'm like hating what I'm going through, I'm like, wow, these people have a real operation. This isn't, I forget the name of the movie, um, but where uh, the gal steals his identity, he, he chases him down. I, I can't think of the name of it right now. I'm a ter uh, I'm terrible with movie <laughs> names, but I know what you're talking about. But yeah. it, you yeah. know, yeah. But the comical part, it's good they say that. But, um, you know, fortunately, the issue is is wound down to this, persp you know, at this point in time. Is it going to rear its ugly head again? I think that there's more protections in place that I have now. Uh, but there are, you know, a couple tips. You know, contact the police, uh, open up a police report. As information happens, keep providing them the information to keep your file active and the information going. Um, now, a cool question on the police report. I mean, you opened that you called the police here in San Diego, but that had to be transferred up, up to, to the L.A. Police Department. Yes, it was um, uh, Temple City okay. Police Department. And uh, because it was we had some facts that yep. it was happening in Duarte. And yep. so it was, you know, covered there. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, that there's constant changes that go on with the phone calls or the communications that happen. You're dealing with. You know, people that seem legitimate, they say, oh, I have another person on the line. They say that they're legitimate to be on your account. So they they have a system in place. You talk about scripts at a telemarketing company, they've got it down. You know? <laughs> and that's that's the scary part. I mean, you have to be so careful, you know, and it's sad because you don't want to live your life looking over your shoulder. But, but you know, David, you're probably, I mean, that's one of those things that you possibly could be dealing with this for a very long time. Definitely. Yeah. But I have to say, knowing the things I know now, it's not you realize what their agenda is and it's not necessarily something coming over and doing physical harm to you. Yeah. So it's yeah. not that you can't sleep well at night in the end of, you know, there's multiple other things that you can do. If it would be extreme, have your social security number changed. Uh, but in the interim, contact the IRS, have a pin number put on your documents because one of the things they also do is put together fraudulent uh, tax returns, <laughs> and then they will actually get a refund in your name. And you wouldn't know till later, but there are resources available. But I, I have said during this process, if anybody out there wants to create a company that can unify all of this, give a one-stop solution, I'm more than happy to invest in you and become part owner. I just don't have the time. See, so and, I, I believe in it. And that's a beautiful thing. This is David Rudd, Kindred Real Estate Services, um, kindredre.com. And, you know, it's it's interesting you say that because, you know, occasionally we'll, we'll talk about something great. And, you know, it, it's a, it is a great business opportunity for somebody because this is a huge deal. And it's only going to get worse. I mean, with all the data that gets poured online, we, we open ourselves up for I, not only just credit card fraud. I mean, that's something different. That's, that's an, you know, hey, credit card fraud a, we, compared to this is, is easy. You're going to, they'll reverse the charges, get, issue a new card, and you're done. But... Identity theft, identity takeover, whole different ballgame. And regretfully, people don't have time 
to take care of it. So if you are that person that, you know, has some extra time, you want a great business, um, I mean, this is something that is needed. It's needed because Tough. people don't know where to go. And you probably, you could, you could be a- um, Very a, lucrative business. Very lucrative, yes. Because the, you know, the emotional distress other people have gone through yeah. probably over this, I'm you know, extraordinarily mentally strong just due to all of the things that I've done in my life. So for me, it's kind of, a, it's a, a less to effect that I think would be to the average person. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I'm so you're very calm about it all. <laughs> I feel like I'm more emotional yeah. about your identity but, thing over the night than you are. But starting yeah. the business, it can be extraordinarily lucrative. Yeah. I mean, it, it's across the board. My hands, I can't get into too many pots. Otherwise, <laughs> my customer service goes down. As my clients know, yeah. they they come first. Well, and you have a client that is selling an amazing home. Um, it's it's going to be opened up for for preview in in August. And one of the things that I I always try to bring is something that's coming to the market, something that's not on the market today. This could be the home that you've been looking for. If you're looking for a dream estate, we'll be right back, and we're going to give you the details on this Poway estate. And there's a little slip right there. It it is in Poway. <laughs> it's your lunch hour. We'll be right back. If you would like free advice from Mr. Credit, just call or text 619-786-7853. That's 619-786-7853. Welcome back to the Lunch Hour with Mr. Credit. And today it's Macro Monday on ESPN Radio 1700. Welcome back. It's your lunch hour today, 1700 ESPN, Mr. Credit, and it's JJ Synergy One lending in the hot seat today on this Macro Monday, as always on Monday. If you have any questions for me, you want to get answered. If you have any questions about what we've been talking about, identity theft, identity takeover, or you have a question for David, um, just just go to askjjnow.com. You can send me a text, shoot me an email, give me a phone call, put you in touch with David. It's David Rudd with Kindred Real Estate Services. Just brought us amazing information. Um, the whole deal from start to finish uh, with identity theft, identity takeover. And <clears throat> one thing that um, David has an amazing background, number one. I mean, he's been in the banking sector and wealth management. He knows the real estate business. You've owned, yeah, I don't know if you still own, but you've, you've had uh, ownership in, a, in an appraisal company. Yeah. And um, what's amazing to me, and we're talking about a multi-million dollar appraisal company. And, you know, appraisals, let's face it, you know, you're, you're, uh, you're talking about 350, 450, 550 for a big property. That's a lot of appraising that needs to be done to get to a multi-million dollar company. Um, you're a real estate agent. You're a broker as well since 2003. Been in San Diego County since 1996. Um, so you know the area. Um, and one thing that I love to do when we're on the show is bring properties. Because, you know, people are listening. And so many people have had such a hard time getting into properties. They've put in their offers, their 20 offers. Now, I guarantee you, if you're looking for one of these homes, you probably haven't put 20 offers in, or maybe you have, and you got to stop lowballing them by a couple million dollars to get the deal done. But we we might have your dream estate right here today. Uh, but but you have another property that you want to talk about. Let's let's bring it. Great. Well, I've got a beautiful property that's um, part of Poway Unified School District, which I'm huge huge firm believer in. Uh, when doing any sort of real estate investment or just purchasing, I feel that education really creates the glue that keeps values together because yep. it makes it more difficult for people to transition out because you'll hear from a lot of your clients, I don't want to disrupt my kids' lives. I don't want to uproot them um, unless it's for some sort of job change. But uh, this is in a community called Stonebridge. It's at the back of Scripps Ranch. And uh, it's a beautiful about, area. Yeah, it's yep. definitely beautiful. And uh, it has views over the canyon. It's about 3,500 square feet. Uh, 
full bed, full bath downstairs. And we just are doing a price modification. So it's going uh, to market at eight, but with a value range of 849,000 to 879,000. Wow. Uh, beautiful amenities and uh, definitely recommend coming to check us out or give me a call. We'd love to show it to you. Well, let me give you that number um, just because David, you probably don't want to give it out. You'll feel bad about it. I don't have to feel bad about it. I, I believe this is a direct number, 858-395. 6315. Correct. 858 395 6315. Now, I know a lot of our listeners like to text message. Can you get text messages there as well? Yes. Yeah. And okay. it's, it's my personal cell phone. So feel Thank free you. to get directly in contact with me. And uh, just always know when I'm with a client, if I don't pick up, that's the reason why. And sometimes it, we're on air right now. You can't, I can't pick up. <laughs> I have a text message from a listener. We'll get back to you here. Um, but that's, that's amazing. <laughs> Eight, 850 to 8 or 849, 879 Poway, 3,500 square feet. Sounds like an amazing deal. And it is an amazing school district. I mean, people that move there love Poway. A lot of athletes move to Poway for a reason. Um, Let's get into this next property. I mean, you have an, a, a brochure here, David, that is probably one of the nicest home brochures I've ever seen. We're not talking about a flyer, folks. And we are recording this. So, so if you go to mrcredit.tv, um, you can probably see the stream. But this is a multi-page brochure. It's done on paper that is, uh, you know, uh, it's it, this is beautiful. This is beautiful. And... One thing that you had mentioned to me, I mean, you don't just do this for this extraordinarily dream home estate. You do these types of things for million dollar homes as well. Definitely. And that even hits into our you know, $500,000 range. We believe our philosophy, and that's why we're called Kindred Real Estate, is it comes from the word kin, which is family. So when I, the philosophy came together um, of building you know, the brokerage, we wanted to treat all of our clients like family. I, you know, obviously I'm in this to make money because if I'm not making money, I'm not doing right by my clients. But the second part of why I do it is because I'm extraordinarily passionate about it. I want people, you know, I, I, I love the, the day when I sell a home to a first time home buyer, you have that moment where they open the door and the, you know, the keys go open. They're so excited. And no matter what, the quote unquote commission is, or what I refer to as our salary, that's something priceless. So I agree. That's I with agree. me forever. Yeah. And I remember each time and every one. It is so, an amazing, it is yeah. an amazing feeling. I, I love working with people and, and getting them into the homes and, and it, you are fulfilling dreams. Exactly. And this, this home is definitely a dream home. Let's talk about, I mean, this is a Poway dream home. That's exactly what it says on the brochure, the ultimate and luxury living 11,000 square feet. Now this home is not on the market, it's coming to the market, and you're having a open house tour. Correct. And let's talk about the home, number one, and let's talk about the tour. Great, well, we wanna invite you all out on August 10th, it's between 12 and 4 p.m. Uh, we, it's a very few times in your life, I know that they have the luxury collection where you go through the three homes that are dream homes, but this house is truly outstanding. And whether you're there in the market to purchase it, uh, we always believe that, you know, word of mouth is, you know, everything. Priceless. It, it is priceless. And, you know, although you may not be in the market to purchase this home, maybe you have somebody that does. And yep. I, I love selling homes. And this home is truly amazing. It's sitting at over 11,000 square feet on five acres. There's about 2,000 uh, square feet of outdoor living space. So you're, you're buying a a resort in itself and a, and a true way of living. Uh, we're coming to market at 7.9 million and we we de just definitely would love to share it with you. Um, it's located up in the Heritage in Poway um, off Old Coach Road. And it, it definitely is not only stunning, spectacular, but it has the most amazing finishes in the home. No detail has been missed. Uh, we also have solar to the house. so. On a house this size, you're a little bit scared about what your electricity bill Oh, I couldn't bill. even imagine. Yeah. $500. Not only with that type of square footage of lot, they also have a well on property. Wow. So you're able to keep your landscape lush. You're able to enjoy the property. So your water bills, ta-da, 
That's it's huge. been taken care of. That's huge. Definitely. That's amazing. That is amazing, and especially being in the drought that we're in right now. I mean, having that well on 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 property is huge. Yes. And I'm telling. I mean, you're not. You know, you're not doing the the home justice. I'm. I'm the the pictures on this place. I mean, you wouldn't have to leave the property <laughs> to. Um, you know. I would just have groceries delivered because you wouldn't want to leave. Um, the views are stunning. Um, amazing pool, spa with a kind of a uh, a little cave, a rock cave. Yeah, well, the, I don't know what they call it a, a feature that will be difficult to demonstrate on at the at uh, the showing, although it will be happening. The spa is, is stationary, okay. but to raise the spa to give it a lift, actually the water level drops below the spa. So you have still the, the waterfalls coming off the sides, but instead of it just being above the entire time or above water line, the water line drops to accommodate the Unbelievable. spa. Unbelievable. Yeah, it's That's, amazing. It is. And, and yeah, I mean, and I, I'm telling you, I mean, 7.9 million might seem a lot. I've, I've, been in a lot of homes that are in that price range and I'm telling you this thing is amazing and probably worth every penny the finishes look insane um, if you have a large family you just kick the family to one wing and you won't even you won't even know they're there um, my neighbors having 18 people come in from all over the uh, the world um, for a family reunion this coming weekend I don't know where they're gonna put them in their five bedroom house but this this place definitely would suit them um, so that's August 10th Yes. And the heritage. And just get in touch with David here. You can get in touch with me, but 858-395-6315. That's 858-395-6315. He can give you the detailed. You have to see this place. You have to see it. Even if you know somebody that might be interested, even if you don't and you want to tour a luxury estate, this is the time to do it. August 10th, noon to four. David Rudd, Kindred Real Estate Services. That's Kindred, R-E, like kindredre.com. Go check them out. And David, thank you so much for taking the time and sharing your experience with identity theft. The, the hour goes by quickly. We're out of time. Yes. Thanks for having me. Um, but I appreciate it. It's been a pleasure to have you on. Looking forward to the next time having you on. And um, I know for sure we made you smarter than everybody else on this Macro Monday. It's your lunch hour, Mr. Credit. It's JJ. I'll see you on Wednesday. If you would like to contact Mr. Credit or access any free offers mentioned on the show, just go to mrcredit.org. That's mrcredit.org.